time for the Desert Southwest's most complete coverage of high school football. Friday Night Lights, live from the KYMA studios, Cole St. Clair, Tommy Tran, Adam Mertz, and Miles Hofschultz. Friday Night Lights. That's right. Welcome to week eight of Friday Night Lights. I'm Cole St. Clair and... Well, I'm Tommy Tran. That is the sports director here. And thank you so much for joining us tonight as we have an action-packed show for you. Seven games were on tap and we're going to start, well, with the game of the week. And oh boy, were we excited. As you may have seen on the evening edition, we are ready to give you highlights from Palo Verde as the Central Spartans invaded Scott Stadium to take on the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, but due to a power outage in Blythe, our Maz Hofschultz was left in the dark, so to speak. Let's show you. That's a, Yeah, they're playing football <laughs> still. And you know what? He did not leave empty-handed. There's the video, as you can see. And uh, you know what? It was kind of tough out there. There was a power outage in Blythe, some road closures as well that he got stuck in. Fortunately, we're glad to have him back. There you see the generator. Some car headlights are on there, Cole, as they, we're still trying to get the game on. Now, the game was played. The lights would come about half an hour later, and at last check, Central was up 35 to 8. We'll keep and have an update for you, but uh, we got more football to talk about. Yeah, we sent Miles all over the desert southwest. Um, boy, he put in a really good effort today. Luckily, he came away at least with something. Now, okay, let's move on and talk about the hottest team in the desert southwest. We're, of course, talking about the luck of the Irish and the Hume Catholic. A perfect 8-0. The Rocks hosted West Wind Preps of hoping to continue their dream season under Red Stallworth. Let's take you there. And you know what? It was a number one foam finger night. Cool, look at that. Excited to be at the ballpark, and it would start right away. That's Elliot Cooley getting some reps. Eric Martinez out for one more week. He'll be back for Antelope. That'll be fun. And then Matt Inman fighting Brian Badgley. They did it right in front of me. Inman to Badgley. How many times have we said that this year? Great stuff from Matt Inman and then fireworks. That's kind of cool, because when you're not at the game, you can see that they scored a touchdown. Then Austin Rodriguez. Takes it at his own 25-yard line. See ya. Up the sideline, 75 yards later. Austin Rodriguez also stepping up in replacement of Eric Martinez. Later now, it'd be more Inman into Badgley right at me. Goodness, these guys make me look good. Nice tandem. Badgley goes the distance. YC improves to 9-0 as they beat West Wind Prep 63-6. 9-0 overall, 5-0 in the 2A West. Very, very impressive. All right, let's move to the 5A Gila Valley region where tonight's, well, the first week, all four well, teams and county rivals, they go head to head. The marquee matchup was at Doan Field on Prison Hill as the Yuma Criminals look to upset first place Cibola. Out to Doan Field we go. Raiders out and take a look at that. Wes Williamson, a new twist to an old favorite getting inside the police car. Well, another old favorite we like to see here is young Brandon Hall back after two weeks on the sidelines. Boy, you really want him on. The field, not on the sidelines. Even puts throws down the shoulder. Big, big hit. Talk about big hits. Jacobo, yeah, he also hit uh, Eric Rivas, but a big, big hit by Ricardo Navarro. Then Jacobo again will look deep. Yeah, and I mean deep. He finds Sam Morrill over double coverage. A huge gain, but boy, the field goal, it would not be in the cards there for the criminals. No good. So how about Cibola? Their turn on offense. Cormac Dillon, Arvizo will look deep as well. He tries to find Garrett Firestone, but that one is just out of bounds. That would leave a field goal try for Cibola. That one is up, and it is good. 3-0 Cibola. They'd actually be up 10 to nothing in this one. Then Michael Bradley on the run. Guess what? The criminals come back down 10-0 to win 14-10. to First win for head coach Mike Chadwick. Oh, bravo. So happy for Mike Chadwick, Tommy. You know what? Tough start at 0-7, but they get their first win. Good job, criminals, and good job, West. That was a great shot. The Kofa Kings and the San Luis Sidewinders find themselves in a familiar position this season. Both schools are looking to build a successful program. A win tonight would help go towards that. Let's head to Sidewinder Stadium. These guys are trying to spell Go San Luis or a bad version of Yugoslavia. I'm not sure which one. I'll take the Go San Luis. That's Dustin Stevenson. That's right up the middle. This kid's a good looking running back. And you know what? Dance with who brung you? More Stevenson. He takes it into the end zone, tosses it to the referee. Yeah, I'll be back in a little while. Edwin Caron the superstar for San Luis gets hit as he throws. Ricky Cavilla with the pickoff. I love those all white jerseys. He comes back the other way. And we said Timmy Lee needed to get some touches. And you know what he did? He goes left, he comes back right. All the way around Timmy Lee. Goodness, he even switches it back to the right hand. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Goodness, King's looking good. Carranza now towards the end of the half would try to create. 
And there he is looking for Jesus Guevara. Just too much Kings though. Kofa goes on to win 42 to nothing. Now stick with the Aces here on Friday Night Lights is still to come. Don't touch that dial because I'm going to take you dancing. Kofa Homecoming 2007. The Kings look to rack up Tim Leaf Brophy Preparatory. More lights in mere moments. Friday Night Lights is brought to you by the Law Office of Thomas G. Kelly III, Accident Attorney, and by Buffalo Wild Wings. That's our best one yet. That was well choreographed. Good shooting there, Jeremy. Nice job. Welcome back to FNL Week 8. Ocho Snowman. Goodness, it's been eight weeks. The Imperial Valley League also had a big matchup tonight. Early, we told you about the Spartans and the Yellow Jackets. Well, they didn't quite materialize. Two of the top teams in the IBL, not too far behind, is both Brawley and Calexico. A win tonight could send one team to at least a share of second place. Let's head to Warren Field. And Brawley punt. Yeah, you can see it. Boy, not taken in very well, though. All, all kinds of trouble can happen on special teams, and it did right there. Unfortunately, the Wildcats couldn't convert. Now, next drive for Calexico. Quarterback Michael Romero pass to Eric Romero. Nice short game for Calexico. They played tough tonight. More. Romero on the quarterback sneak. A nice gain here. They wouldn't be able to punch it in, and the Wildcats would go on to win 14 0. They improved to 5 3, 2 0 in the IBL. All right, over in the Desert League, first place was on the line tonight as the Packers, oh, I mean, sorry, Hopeville Vikings went into the Desert. And, uh, well, the Desert League and the Tigers then to take on Imperial. Four and two Vikes, three and three Tigers. Let's roll the tape. Tiger cheerleaders representing. There's a the Tiger as well. And you take a look at Hopeville. Looking pretty good. Early on, the Hopeville punt's going to be returned by Mario Gomez. And he is going to do some things. Harry takes it left. He's going to have a huge gain that sets up some good field position for the Tigers. Now, Tigers will be on the prowl when quarterback, you know his name, Tyler Beal, drops back to pass, cannot find anybody. He's going to use his legs instead. He'll go in all the way. You certainly do. And that would set it up another big drive. Beal, again, this time he shows the arm, the nice wide screen. That one is going to go up for a huge gain. And that would end up being a touchdown as well. Hopeville would come back as Orlando Ortiz. He Will not be denied here. He goes on the left side, up the left-handed side, down the sidelines. But the Tigers going to win 45 to seven. They improved to four and three, and they are actually tied with the Vikings for first place in the Desert League. All right, keep it here on Friday Night Lights. You've seen our we'll play the week candidates. Find out which one takes home the prize. I feel like analysts want to give it away. Plus a look ahead at college and pro football with Chris Miller from B Dubs. It's on tap coming up. Plus, coming up, we'll have all those highlights and scores for you across the Desert Southwest. And if you haven't called in, you still have about, eh, give or take, two minutes. So give us a call with those numbers. Stay with us. You're watching Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights is brought to you by the law office of Thomas G. Kelly III, accident attorney, and by Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back, Friday Night Lights, week eight. Hey, let's talk about one of my favorite subjects, Tommy Shoes Alexander and the Scots from Vincent Memorial for a minute. They are perhaps the most exciting two and three team you'll ever gonna see. Tonight, they hosted Mount Empire, hoping to get to 500. Both teams taking a look right there, getting ready for this one. The Red Hawks, Marcus Stevens finds Jeremy Ulmer. Nice toss, that's a pitch and catch right there. That's the way you do it, looking a little bit like YC there. Steven again finds Amaya Hall. That's the way you do it. You throw them where they ain't, and then you take off and run. Nice run. Excellent there. And was I talking about Tommy Shoes? Yeah. Just give it to him and let him create. Pushed out of bounds. More shoes. Man, it's hard to take your eye off this kid. Moves everywhere. All by himself. But you know what? He'd take a tumble in this one, and that wouldn't be good. Now, Demetrius Symington would take over for him, though, doing his best shoes impersonation. But unfortunately, he lays it on the turf, recovered by the Hawks, and they go on to lose in a heartbreaker, even without shoes. They stick it out, but lose 31 to 28. 
Now let's check in with our buddy Chris Miller. He's going to talk college in pro, but hey, Chris, what do you think of Friday Night Lights? You know what? Another great Friday Night Lights, man. I love it when you get into rivalry season, man. I know you do too, and this is cool stuff. A lot of those folks are coming over to Buffalo Wild Wings after the game tonight. That would be great too, but tomorrow, this is Chris's weekend, baby. You know what? Ohio State playing Michigan State. Okay, Michigan State, not that big a deal, but Ohio State's number one. And that's a great thing, right? We love Ohio State at number one over here at Buffalo Wild Wings. So I'm pretty happy about that. But then as we roll into Sunday night, what happens again? Chris's favorite team, Denver, Pittsburgh, the Sunday night matchup. It doesn't get much better than that. Now, I will tell you, a few years back, I was in Three Rivers Stadium. I watched the Broncos put an end to the Pittsburgh Steelers' aspirations years ago. Well, you know, the Broncos haven't been looking so good lately, but they're going to look good Sunday night. My prediction, Broncos victors over the Pittsburgh Steelers. What do you think? Ooh, you know what? Hey, by the way, Chris is getting pretty good. Should I be worried a little bit? I don't know. Uh, Denver, though, after that, uh, you know, San Diego outpouring, kind of, kind of lead them up. It's going to be kind of tough against Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. But, hey, it's time for our play of the week. Let's take it out to Kofa and San Luis. We're talking about Timmy Lee taking it to the hizzy for Kofa. That one all the way to the house for a touchdown, and Kofa goes on to beat San Luis 42 to nothing. Man, he is an exciting player. I saw him week one against Human Catholic, and we thought if we could get him some more touches, Timmy Lee was an exciting player, and sure enough, he didn't prove that tonight. Now, you guys, we lost Miles tonight, but we didn't lose Adam Mertz, thank goodness. Guns is in our newsroom with a recap of tonight's scores from all the Desert Southwest. Guns. Well, Tommy Cole, I think Miles is still on his way back from uh, Blythe or Palo Verde or wherever he was because, you know what, he's still not here, so uh, he's still MIA. But anyhow, we do have the scores for you, so we're going to take a look at our scoreboard right now. And as you can see, Parker comes up on top, 24-22. Yuma Catholic still unstoppable, 63-6. Moving on, Brawley wins 14-0 over Colexico and Imperial, 45-7 over Holtville. Vincent Memorial 28 just wasn't enough as Mountain Empire edges them 31-28. And Yuma getting that first victory of the year, 14-10 over Cibola. And the Kofa Kings come out on top, blanking San Luis 42-0. Central Union 49-16 over Palo Verde. I think Miles is actually still out there. And one last game for you here that was tonight as Antelope comes up on top after double overtime. Chance mixing now with the two-yard score. They win 32 to 26, and we still have one more game for you tomorrow. Calipat takes on Army Navy Saturday afternoon, and uh, nothing better than those Saturday afternoon high school football games. It complements the college football, which complements the pro football on Sunday, but definitely a great night of football. I'm gonna toss it back to you, Tommy and Cole. Mm, modest Mertz. Thanks, Adam. Hey, yeah. you know what? I didn't get a chance to thank you. Uh, you know you're a Dolphins man. I'm a Chargers man. Thanks for Chris Chambers. Yeah. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, they're 0-6. Need them. That's right. My 3-3 three three boys do. Real quickly, let's talk about uh, Saturdays. 1 o'clock. It's a perfect time to catch Friday Night Lights. I know for a fact because when I was gone for a couple weeks, this is how I found out how all the Desert South teams were doing. You go to KYMA.com. Actually, you're one of our new brand new websites, FNL link, and you can check it out Saturday, 1 o'clock. But let's talk about Friday night, tonight, not Saturday, and talk about the Yuma Criminals in the first one. I could be happier. Great for the program, and I think this is a real jumping off point for Mike Chadwick. You know, we got to meet him the day he got hired. Really good guy. He really had an effect on me. And I know that 0-7 was tough, but he got a win tonight. It was, and it had maybe something to do with Coach's Appreciation Day. We had uh, AD Mike Sharp live on Sunrise talking about the coaches and what a way to get Mike Chadwick for him to get his very first win. And let's take a real quick peek into next week. A huge, huge game. I don't think there's going to be any doubt of what our game of the week is going to be. And no question, it's YC and Antelope. And of course, their history is, you know, chronicled. But now so much on the line with YC at the top of the rankings. Antelope not that far behind. Yeah, and, and it's a rivalry game. And would John Blabe and his boys love anything more? and spoil a perfect season for you, McCaffrey. Yeah, really. When you start thinking, you talk about Chris Miller, you're talking about Ohio State and Michigan. It really does yeah. kind of size up like it's that last yeah. game of the season. And boy, they really have a lot on the line. Can't look any more forward to that. That'll be fun. Yeah? We got to take another look at the play of the, yes. play of the, play of the game. There we go. Real quick, there's Timmy, Timmy Lee. Lee. Boom. That's a good way to finish. Five seconds left, everybody. That is it for us. Sports director Cole St. Clair, Tommy Tran. We'll see you. Okay.